Welcome back. We're joined for our Sunday supplement this week by the acclaimed British author Julian Barnes, former Home Office Minister Anne Widdicombe and film director Nick Francis. Now, Nick, you've uh, recently made a film about uh, about one man's uh, one Ethiopian coffee grower's sort of. Uh, I think he was really trying to secure a better sort of future for all the other coffee growers in Ethiopia. Tell me a little bit about that. How, why is it that coffee growers there are having such a hard time? <coughs> Partly because is it all Starbucks? Uh, no, I mean they're they're one of they're one of the main one. Of, well, actually, they're not one of the biggest players in the market. It's Nestle, Kraft, Sara Lee, Procter and Gamble, mm. who turn over multi billions of dollars. When you compare that to, uh, and they're also not just involved in coffee. Starbucks is just a coffee company, mm. but because it's so present on the high street, and I think last week or two weeks ago they announced they're going to be opening 40,000 stores worldwide. Yeah, more they, than McDonald's. They, that's it's incredible, right. isn't they it? They attract this public attention, and they're much more conscious about their image perhaps than others. Mm. What we tried to do in Black Gold, which is the film. Uh, which opened in the US cinemas not long ago and premiered here in the UK just the other day. We tried to show um, the, basically the disparity in those people winning and losing in the kind of global economy, telling that story through coffee. There are a few other examples which really show so explicitly you know, how people are being exploited. And the, the guy you're mentioning, Teresa Mescola, we follow him from Ethiopia to the UK and in the US in an attempt to bypass some of the chains that block Ethiopian coffee growers from getting a decent price. Mm -hmm. So he returns some of that profit back to the coffee growers so they can at least start um, having a basic, basic lifestyle. This is not the kind of luxury. But he says in the film, you know, just to basically afford healthcare, so on and so yeah. forth. But, you know, up until, certainly what we found by screening the film all over the place is up to now, coffee company has got away with it. And this film is sparking a new debate around getting yeah. people scrutinizing them. So, and do you drink fair trade coffee? No, I can't Why stand not? it. Uh, I think that if fair trade coffee... Do you coffee, drink coffee? Well, I drink a lot of coffee. Yeah, let's see. I think... No, 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 let you let me. Let me have a go. Let me have go a go. On. You've just had a long one. Uh, I think that if um, fair trade coffee wants to compete, it's got to be appealing as mm. well as morally appealing. I mean, I think what Nick's done is a great thing. I mean, yeah. I, I think the moral questions being posed are, are absolutely wonderful. But I do know this, that when I get a cup of what I call conscience coffee, oh. I think, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> can I, okay, can we've got to make it. I'm afraid we've got to leave it there. He wants to have a go. We've really got to leave it there. You just, missed, you've really you've right. there. You just missed the point. No Thank you all very much. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. And coming up after the break, the ITV News with a full bulletin. See you in a moment.